Hi guys, my name is Mackenzie and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be a little different. I'll still update you guys on the wedding stuff, but I also wanted to add 10 things people don't tell you about planning weddings. So first I'll just give you an update of what we did this month. So this month we... What did we do this month? So this month I flew out to Arizona for my first dress alteration. While I was out there, we also got my bridesmaids outfits together, finished up some like little essential shopping such as like the ring bear pillows, the flower girl basket, looking up flower girl dresses. Um, what else? We also got me new wedding shoes, so that was exciting. And it was mostly just putting the little pieces together, not so much anything like drastic. So next month I think I'll have a little bit more to talk about and then the, mo the month of June I'll be in Arizona. We'll be doing some final getting together before we head out to San Diego. So sorry that was just quick, not, we didn't do much. Oh, I forgot to add that we got the bridesmaids gifts and groomsmen's gifts together and he, Jamar ended up buying all the ties for the groomsmen and the shoes for the groomsmen because they're wearing chucks and not dress shoes. So that was his gift to the groomsmen plus something else that I won't mention. But anyways, let's get into the second part of this video. 10 things that people don't tell you about wedding planning. I have my little list here because, girl. Planning a wedding is, is not, you're not gonna fly through it with flying colors. Let's just say that. It's pretty stressful and most of the stress comes from other people, <laughs> not so much uh, what you have to do, it's the people you deal with. All love in this video, I don't hate anyone, I'm not frustrated at anyone, um, but these are some things that we went through that hopefully can give you guys some insight on what to expect. So the first thing I wrote down is a tip to being a guest of a wedding. Don't invite yourself to somebody's wedding. It seems like a weird tip, like duh, I'm not gonna invite myself to somebody's wedding, but it happened probably about five times. People will contact you like, hey, don't forget that wedding invite. And it's like, you can only invite a certain amount of people for how much you're willing to pay for your wedding. So we had a budget, we wrote out our budget and our budget called for so many people. And then when people just, out of the blue try to add their self it puts stress on us and then it makes it uh, seem like the bad guy because we have to tell people no and it's n there is nothing against anyone who wasn't invited to our wedding it's just we had to make sure it was our close family and friends before anybody else and then and I'm talking like about immediate people that we talk to every day or every week and then it goes on from there so if we don't talk to you every day or we don't talk to you at least once a month the invite may not be coming to you so don't invite yourself to someone's wedding it puts so much stress on the bride and groom number two if you are invited to somebody's wedding don't ask to invite more people than are welcomed so if the bride and groom say you and your plus one can come, don't try to bring all of your kids. If your kid's not coming means that you can't come, then that's just what's gonna have to happen. You're gonna have to understand the circumstances the bride and groom are in, and nobody else understands the cost of a wedding except the bride and groom or whoever is paying for the wedding. So you have to be considerate of that too. So trying to say that you're inviting your auntie's cousin, sister's niece's nephew is really, really rude. Just don't ask to invite more people. It's the bride and groom invited you and you and your spouse or you and your plus one only. So I don't know what makes guests feel like it, it's their right to make the bride and groom feel uncomfortable and ask to invite four more people. Number three, don't give the bride and groom advice on how to plan their wedding unless they ask. I don't know how many people have 
came up to me and they're like, oh, well, have you done this? Oh, you should do it this way. Oh, you should look this way. Oh, you should. It's like, come on. If I asked for your advice, I would take your advice. I try to keep, we try to keep the advice from our wedding coming from as little people as possible. The number one person to give advice is our wedding planner. And that's who we listen to. Number one. Number two, I would say would be parents. But in on the other side of that, parents can be a little pushy and a little overwhelming, not not trying to frustrate you. It's out of love. They want it to be perfect. They want everything to go well. And I would just say, don't feel like you have to listen to all the advice everybody's giving you. Make it as simple as possible and make it the way that you want it. If the bride and groom wanted advice, they will ask. Next, this is not a family reunion. Yes, a wedding is a good time to have family together and friends together and it's a good time. But this kind of goes back to what I said about inviting extra people, even if they are family. As a bride and groom, you do not have to feel obligated to invite your aunt just because your mom knows or your mom talks to her all the time but if you have no relationship with this aunt then don't you don't have to invite them whoever i don't it doesn't matter who wants them at the wedding if you don't want to invite this person that may be related to you but you don't talk to do not feel obligated to do so and on the other side of that as family members do not make your the bride and groom feel guilty for not inviting somebody that you talk to and have a relationship with and they don't have a relationship with. And the next tip is kind of covers what I've already said is weddings are expensive. So be considerate as a guest. Don't ask to add people and think about what the bride and groom pay for. The bride and, or whoever's paying for the wedding. Every chair costs money, every plate costs money, every napkin costs money, every plate that goes under a plate costs money, every seat in the ceremony room costs money. Everything costs money. So inviting one extra person or asking to invite one extra person could actually potentially be in the thousands, if not a little bit less or a little bit more. So you have... You have to think about that when inviting a guest. You have to understand and be considerate of everything that costs money in a wedding. This is a tip for bridesmaids and groomsmen. Be on top of things. If the the bride says you guys need your dresses by this time, make sure you guys plan accordingly to save money, to get your dress, to make sure it's altered in time because everything can't fall on the bride and groom. Um, when you are the maid of honor and stuff like that, you make sure you're an organized person. And if you're not, tell the bride or groom and pass that role on to somebody else. Although you may want that title of maid of honor or best man, sometimes that title needs to go to someone who is more organized and ready for the job. Planning a bachelorette party and a bachelor party isn't easy. So I would just say as brides and groom or groomsmen and bridesmaids, just make sure you're on top of things and you help the bride and groom make their wedding go as smooth as possible. This is a teamwork to get this wedding going. This is a tip for brides and grooms. And I've kind of already said it. All of these kind of fall under each other, but don't feel bad for not inviting someone. So if someone calls you and say, hey, like I didn't get an invite or Hey, um, I just wanted to add one more person. Do not feel bad to say no. Cause like I said before, people don't understand the costs of weddings. Do not be afraid to say no until someone else is planning a wedding. They will never understand the position that you're in. So if someone's that mad at you that they can't invite someone else or that they're not invited, then maybe you need to, talk to them about your friendship or your relationship. Next, don't get butt hurt if you're not invited to somebody's wedding. Obviously, you weren't invited for a reason and it and most of the time it's not malicious and it's not meant to hurt you. Um I've had friends get married and I wasn't invited and I did not take it personal. And at the time I actually didn't know what went into going or what went into a wedding or planning a wedding. But now that I know, I could never, ever be mad at someone for not inviting me to their wedding. I mean, unless it was my sister or my brother. But other than that, 
you can't be mad at a friend for not inviting you. You don't know what they're going through. They don't. You don't know what they're looking for in their wedding. You don't know how small or big their wedding is. So instead, maybe just send them a congratulations and I wish you the best. And they and just keep your friendship alive or your relationship alive. Don't let this wedding be something that tears people apart. The next tip is for guests. Don't try to add yourself last minute. And what I mean by this is, say you are giving an invite, you don't know, you got to save the date, and it's getting closer to the wedding. So it's like two months into the, the wedding and you still don't know if you can come. Don't wait until two months or one month before the wedding to tell somebody, oh, I can come back in. Because in our case, once people told us they couldn't come, it was like, okay, we're putting other people that were kind of wanting to come or that had asked for someone else to come into the wedding. So you can't be flippy floppy with people in their weddings. Like we have a certain amount of chairs, a certain amount of plates, a certain amount of food. And when we take away or add, that's losing or that's losing money either way. So you have to be very considerate about your commitment or lack of commitment. And if you can't come, don't try to add yourself last minute. It is a pain in the butt. It really is. And my last and 10th tip is don't be petty about the guests that are coming. If you are going to the wedding and you don't like someone coming, do not put it on the bride and groom to choose to take somebody out of the wedding or to add somebody back in. Because most of the time when people have a problem with someone, it's resolved in the amount of time it takes to play on a wedding. So if you're over here saying, don't add this person, oh wait, you can add them back, we're cool again. It puts a lot of pressure on the bride and groom. You need to let bygones be bygones, not sit next to them next in the wedding. Maybe mention to the bride or groom, I would like not I would like to not sit next to so and so. But do not be petty and do not involve the bride and groom in drama and tell them who they need to take out and who they don't need to take out. So as you can see, a lot of our wedding drama has come from guests and family. But again, to the family and guests that are watching this, we love each and every one of you, and whether you got an invite or not, we wish everybody could come. We wish everyone could feel the love. It's a time when two families can become one, and it's just a, a beautiful, beautiful time. And if it was perfect, we would have everybody and everyone at our wedding. It just doesn't work that way. So those are my 10 tips. I hope I didn't offend anyone. I just wanted to tell you guys kind of what it's like planning a wedding and talk about some of the things that people don't usually tell you when it comes to planning wedding about the guests and all of that stuff. But thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in next month wedding planning video. Don't forget to comment and subscribe. Bye.